got some year 13 reaction rates questions here so if you want to have a go the link to the questions is in the description so just download the questions have a go and then watch the video for the answers okay so question one the overall effect on the rate if we half the hydrogen concentrations so if we look in the rate equation it's first order with respect to hydrogen so half to the power one multiplied by the NO concentration squared so 2 to the power 2. So the overall effect of all of that is times 2. So it was option C. Okay, so question 2. Got to be careful here because it wants to know what the concentration of AB will be in after 6 minutes. We're told the moles of AB at the start. So after the first half-life, after 2 minutes, that's going to half to 0 0.05. Another 2 minutes to 0 0.025 and another two minutes or so six minutes altogether it's going to go down to 0 0.0125 moles so the concentration is moles divided by volume so the 0 0.0125 moles that we've got left they're in a volume of uh, 100 cm cubed so that's 0 0.1 of a decimeter cubed so that comes out at 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed so it's option c again Question three, suppose relies on you having studied um, transition element chemistry. So copper two plus aqueous ions are blue. So therefore a colorimeter is going to be useful to uh, determine the effect of the concentration. So option C again. Question four now. So we've got to determine the rate constant in a possible two-step mechanism. So obviously the first thing we need to do is determine the orders of the two reactants. So we'll start with ozone. So using experiments one and two, you can see that the NO2 concentration is constant. The ozone concentration has trebled and so has the rate. So that's a first order effect with respect to O3. Simplest way to write that up is just what I've done there. So experiments one and two. O3 concentration times 3, rate times 3, order with respect to O3 is 1, first order. So moving on to the order with respect to NO2. So if you can see there, there's experiments 2 and 3, the ozone concentration is constant. So the um, concentration of NO2 is doubled and so has the rate. So that is also first order. So now we've got the two orders, we can write the rate equation. So it's just rate equals K, and then just put the concentrations in. So O3, you can put a power one if you want, you don't have to. And NO2 in square brackets, also first order. So to get a value for the rate constant K, we rearrange for K and put in the numbers, and I'm gonna use the row one numbers. So that gives us a numerical value for the rate constant K at 0.0128. So we need to do the units now. And of course, all we do is put the units of these things here like that. So we've got the unit of rate divided by the unit of concentration times concentration. Cancel down. So moles per decimeter cubed on the top, moles per decimeter cubed on the bottom cancel. So we're left with seconds to the minus one divided by moles per decimeter cubed and bringing everything up to the top it becomes dm to the 3 mol to the minus 1 s to the minus 1. So moving on to the mechanism now as you can see I've put the overall equation um, again so the rate determinant step is going to involve the reaction of a molecule of ozone and a molecule of NO2. That's all we're allowed as reactants in the rate determinant step. So O3 plus NO2. Can we make any of the products from that? Well, yes, we can make that oxygen molecule. We can't make the N2O5, so that's obviously gonna get formed in the other step. So what have we got left? We've got NO3 left. Now that doesn't feature in the overall equation, so it's obviously an intermediate, so we need to bring it in as a reactant in um, the other step. You can see we need another molecule of NO2, so if we bring that in as a reactant in step two, and we can make the N2O5 directly from that. So 
when you cancel the NO3s, you're left with the overall equation. O3 plus 2 NO2s gives O2 and N2O5. Question 5, it's an Arrhenius graph, so you can see I've highlighted the fact that it starts at 0 on the x-axis, which means that the y-intercept is equal to the lin of A. And that comes from the y equals mx plus c form of the Arrhenius equation, which is on the data sheet. So basically, what that means is that lin of A equals 31.5, so therefore A is going to be equal to E to the 31.5, and when you plug that into your calculator, option D comes out as the answer. The next one, well, the key bit of information here is the fact that it's first order. So one of the features of first order reaction is the half-life is constant. So if the half-life is 20 minutes, it's still going to be 20 minutes of that new concentration. So option B. And finally, we've got um, a proposed mechanism for the reaction. And we've got to decide which is the consistent rate equation. Well, it's all linked to the slow step, that's the rate determinant step. So that means that in the rate equation, we must only have these um, chemicals. So we've got NO2 plus NO2. So in other words, it's going to be option C.